Welcome to Instant Replay Live. We're playing Super Meat Boy, which is a video game? Is that a video game, right? <laughs> Don't. Um, yeah, so speaking of Pretend. video games... Um, I, 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 so this, forced. This a, whoa, whoa, forced? I don't know what you're talking about. We are definitely not scrounging for topics. Is this a video game, Nick? Uh, well, it's funny you ask that, Joe, because what is the definition of a video well, game? That is actually not the direction I'm going in. <laughs> okay. Prepare to have your mind blown by okay. this All right. general hypothetical. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you were, you were given any franchise to... Uh, maybe reboot is the word for it, but to... Um, oh, I went too high. To, uh, <laughs> Icarus. <laughs> Rich too high. Fails oh, mighty Metacarus. Any franchise to uh, make a video game for... Uh, you know, with with the proper team and all the budget you ever need or whatever, what franchise would you want to visit as the kind of creative director? Gosh, that's a... Uh, I know the answer, and it's an easy one for me to say, but then it leads into a lot of questions that follow. Mm. So, so bear with me on that. So we're making a video game series, a single video game. What are we making? Let's call it one video game. You get one chance. I get one chance. If you just had just one shot... <laughs> Would Do you not mom, miss your chance. I, I would make the mom spaghetti video game. No, <laughs> no. Um, definitely this. A a full on Dungeons and Dragons video game with two key design elements at the root of the gameplay. Party based gameplay. So it is, you know, you and four other friends are going to be playing roughly. I mean, maybe give or take a couple, um, but in a semi-persistent world with lots of consequence and a powerful mod slash DM toolkit built in. So imagine Skyrim, multiplayer, but not MMO style. It is you and four or five other people. And when your buddy becomes the leader of the Mages Guild, He's the leader of the Mages Guild, unless you kill him or something else does. Um, and every action has consequence. You'll have towns that love you, towns that hate you. Um, and uh, and, and a, a very diverse list of quest trees that have... You know, that, that flowchart goes on and on. <laughs> of yeah. If this quest is done, this quest is now open, this quest is unlocked, or it is locked forever, this quest is changed in this way, and, I mean, just feeling like you live in a real world, that's that's the game we need. Yeah, I can totally get behind that. I don't, have we, how much have we talked about our love for D&D on this show, actually? I've mentioned Dungeons & Dragons... In the last couple of series, I think, just in passing, because it's always on my mind. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and uh, while we were getting ready for recording the last few episodes, I was also prepping a session, so it was also heavy on my mind. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, I think before we go, we can talk about Dungeons & Dragons. Well, I kind of... Ad nauseum, but I want to hear your answer. Uh, okay, let's do that. I do want to get back to the topic of Dungeons & Dragons in, in, in relation to uh, the interwebs. Yeah. But, um... My answer, oh, okay. So I actually hadn't thought about this because I was like, oh man, what's D&D? &D? <laughs> All right, let's do this. But uh, let's see. Um, man, why is my question so hard? I see, because I, I took the best answer. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't really thinking about D&D, &D, but uh, that's definitely um, a good one. But I, so the, the thing that divides me is do I choose a franchise that I've loved that's already been done and well? And you want to take over. You know, yeah, Zelda, like, why would I need to do that? Oh, um, well, because you can bring a lot of new stuff to it. So that's maybe. true. I, I, mean, I mean, Zelda Zelda's probably your favorite game franchise, ooh, right? I don't know. Really? Okay. Um, I, maybe I, I just assumed then. It's close, um, but I've, like, at times, I've, I've, as I've grown older, I look back on Super Metroid with more fondness than some of the older Zelda games. Oh, nice. That's I, a fantastic game, yeah, for sure. Yeah, playing Super Metroid was much more satisfying for me as an adult than playing Oracle of Ages or even Ocarina of Time, to be honest. Um, See, and, and wait, Oracle of Ages. The Game Boy one. Oh, yeah. Seasons and Ages. Yes, um, yes. I, and I really liked them. I really liked games. Oracle of Ages and Seasons, actually. They're, they're up there on my top. I mean, yeah. Majora's Mask is definitely on the top, but... Uh, Oh, that's a really hard jump right here. Um, so, actually, maybe there, Metroid oh, is the answer. Oh, you had it! Oh, yeah. you had it. Maybe Metroid is the answer because it's been so mistreated lately. Yes, yeah. Um, 
Could we get a 2D Metroid, please, again? Yeah, Metroid, Metroidvania games, I think, are just really yeah. not being exploited enough. Like, what's we don't... that? What's that new one that we just saw on on Steam? Um, something. Oh, it's like it's got a weird like proxy kind of name or something like that. Something computery. Oh, I feel like I have to um, look it up now. Hang on. But there's another one actually that I, I, I saw a long time ago. That's still. Oh wait, I can jump down here. Oh, this makes it so much easier. Um, but there's another one, at least on top of that one, called, um, something uh, real, like Hollow Knight. Real, real quick, that new game is called Axiom Verge. Yeah. It looks incredible. I am definitely picking it up. Um, the because environment it, it screams scratches, Metroid. Yeah, it, everything about it screams Metroid, That's true. I would say, yeah. And but, even in the, the description on Steam, it self-describes as a Metroidvania. Right. Yeah. Um, but in other less Metroid-like, but Metroidvania games... Hollow Knight looks insanely good. The art style is really pretty. Hollow um, Knight. I don't think I've seen that one. Uh, I, I might have sent you a link to it, but it's... Uh... Oh. <laughs> you, are, you are getting your butt this, kicked. This level should, I, should I take over and talk about some D&D &D so you can focus? Um, well, okay, actually. Let's bring it to the topic that I wanted to mention before this, which was... Um, so, obviously, we're doing a Let's Play. Let's yeah. Plays are cool. Yeah. Um, they're harder than we thought they would be, for sure. Yes. Um, something but... I. Oh, I don't know. I, well, never mind. Never mind the butt. Just go on. Um, oh, okay. Ah, all yes. Right. All right. Uh, let me take a moment of rest here to get <laughs> yeah. my question out. Um, <laughs> as I maybe fart a little bit. All right. Um, the, give, give, do it again. See if I can sync it up. Uh, so the thing that I really, really want to do at some point via YouTube okay. or whatever <laughs> is uh, you know some kind of D and D show. Yeah. Well, and, we've talked about that yeah. multiple times. Yeah. But it's so hard. Like, and uh, I mean, it, Will Wheaton's got one coming up. It's, it's hard for a number of reasons, not the least of which is picking your group, mm -hmm. because you've got to get people who are dedicated and willing to express. Uh, and it's okay if you've got like the one quiet person or two quiet people, but you need a good makeup overall. Um, and they need to dedicate time to it, and you need to make sure everybody's mic'd up. Like, right. We couldn't do it with the microphones we have now. We would yeah. have to buy personal mics for each person. Um, and that would be a, you know, we would have to put in an investment to do it. But someday, I want to. Oh, yeah. If, if this channel does well enough to just, I'm not talking about getting rich off of it, just to sustain the cost we're putting into the channel, then it's worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't have to be making a dime as long as I'm doing something I love, which I really am loving doing mm -hmm. this channel. And I get to do something I really love, which is Dungeons & Dragons. Um, in a recorded format, then it would be all worth it. Yeah. So go on. Uh, what was I going to say? Well, you were saying it, it, you want to do it, but it would be hard. And right. I feel like you had another thought coming. Oh, well, not. you were mentioning, obviously, the cost of micing people up. And yeah. I mean, you mentioned you know getting the right team, because, oh, man, like I, I have D&D players that I love, but would they translate well to, you know... Exactly, um, yeah. Ex like, kind same. of a show... Um, and I know a couple would, but I also have a little bit of a diva problem. The people who I think would be best on the show might eventually get on each other's nerves. Sure. Because <laughs> the best role players... Kind of yeah, Conflict is good. Yeah, yeah, to a degree. You, you want everyone to still be having fun. Because I don't want D&D, &D, or this show for that matter, for, for what we are doing on it, to ever not be fun. Um, well, <laughs> But I wouldn't want D and D to ever be soured by trying to turn it into something it's not. I would want to capture the real life of D and D. Um, oh, too high. But yeah, if there was a chance to license out a D and D game, and I had the money to do it, or if I had the investors, holy crap, I'd be on it. Yeah. Oh. Aww. Um. Yeah. I mean, so we haven't even mentioned the challenge of honestly just running a D and D game. With the pressure of, you know... <laughs> yeah, just with a regular casual group. Right. Yeah. Um, but, oh man. The, the thing that gets me so excited about it now, again, kind of, is that the way Will Wheaton's doing it in particular, uh, and uh, advertising Will Wheaton, whatever, but uh, he's he, they developed their own setting, like a full-on setting for mm -hmm. this show, and it's like, oh, man. And that's See, like... The funny thing about that is if I were to do a DMV video game, I would want one of the real settings, one of the established mm. settings. And it would be hard to do it justice. I think Greyhawk would probably be the chosen one for me, but it would probably have to align. If they were doing a game, it would have to align with whatever the current, you know, default setting is. So for Fifth Ed, it would be Forgotten Realms. All um, right. But uh, I would want it to be in the setting, 
but I wouldn't want it to have to touch any necessarily. I mean, maybe one cameo from, uh, you know, everybody's favorite Dark Elf, Driz Dorden, or something like that. But for the most part, I would like it to be independent of any of the major known entities. Yeah. Uh, we want it to be unique. And then, of course, more important than that is that there has a, a, a DM mode, some way to insert your own stories easily, a mod kit or something, um, to make that work for you outside of those stories entirely. Because while D&D settings, I love the, the richness of them, the vastness of them, they can be... Um, or, or not that can be. They, they are not the reason I play. The reason I play is, like you were saying, doing your own setting, making the story yours, your tables. Um, with that, we're going to have to end because we can get passionate about this topic and talk forever, but we'll, we'll talk more about it on the next episode for sure. Mm. Yeah. Lots we can say. <laughs>